the new Ford Bronco Badlands with the Sasquatch package. If you're a Bronco obsessed like me, then you've probably been searching anywhere you can to find a Ford Bronco to buy that doesn't have an insane dealer markup. While I was in the middle of my hunt the other day, I ended up finding this Ford Bronco Badlands with the Sasquatch package. I've owned three Jeep Wranglers, and after spending some time with this Bronco, I realized there's a few features off of the Jeep Wrangler that I really wish the Ford Bronco had. So in this video, I'm going to show you 12 Jeep Wrangler features that the Ford Bronco needs in 2022. Let's start this off by jumping into the Ford Bronco and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel. And there it is, a new Ford Bronco Badlands with the Sasquatch package. And of course, for comparison for this video, parked right next to my 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Now, while I do have my 2015 Jeep Wrangler to compare a few things against the Ford Bronco that the Ford Bronco really needs from the Jeep, for a couple of these points, I'd really like to have a new Rubicon to talk about. So we're gonna hop in the Bronco, go down to a Jeep dealership, and for my first point, we're gonna look at a new Rubicon versus this Bronco. <laughs> So I was about to put this Bronco in drive, but I forgot to push the most important buttons you have to push before you take off in the new Bronco. You gotta turn off this annoying start-stop feature and make sure you turn that trash control all the way off. And here we are at the Jeep dealer. Let's see if they got any Rubicons on the lot. See a Rubicon Gladiator. Nothing over there. It does look like if we go across the street here, we do have some in inventory that we can look at. So. Let's go across. There's a pretty sweet orange one right there. Really like that color. I found a new Rubicon, so let me show you my first point. Now, the one thing that the Jeep Wrangler has that the Ford Bronco really, really needs is right there, a solid front axle. Because Ford thought it was a good idea to go with independent front suspension on the new Bronco. And while there are some good things about having the independent front suspension on the new Bronco, you know, Ford claims that it handles better on the street and all that stuff. And honestly, driving a JL Rubicon in an independent front suspension Bronco, you don't really feel a huge difference on the road, to be honest. And I think the average person is really not gonna be able to tell. Jeep has had literal decades to perfect the handling on these Jeep Wrangler Rubicons with a solid front axle. And while Ford claims the new Bronco does have more articulation off-road than the Jeep Wrangler does, I think that's totally false. You see, I was watching a video where TFL Off-Road compared the Bronco to the Wrangler, and there's this one clip I wanna show you where they go over the same obstacle in the Jeep because of its solid front axle design manages to keep all the wheels touching the ground while the new Bronco ends up actually lifting the tire. A solid front axle would have been better on the new Bronco. However, there is one place where the independent front suspension on the Bronco really shines. This dirt road that's just one giant pothole filled washboard disaster. And that's when you throw it into Baja mode and send it. Now, while flooring it in Baja mode was absolute fun, that brings me to point number two. I'd really like to see the Ford Bronco have a V8 option. Now we do have the new Raptor version that's coming out very, very soon. And rumors have been swirling all over that. Maybe they'll put a V8 in it. And I really don't think so. I have a feeling that they're gonna be putting in the same engine that they put in the new F-150 Raptor, and it's not gonna be much different than that. However, Ford has started to leak a bunch of special edition Broncos, including the new Everglades version that has a snorkel and different wheels and a different paint color and all that stuff. So my hope is that maybe they'll release a special edition of the Ford Bronco Raptor with a V8, even though it might be insanely expensive. Even if a V8 Raptor costs 90 to 100 grand, I think there are people out there that are willing to pay for a special edition like that. Jeep already put out a version of the Wrangler with the V8 to compete with the Ford Bronco. And I think if Ford wants to keep up with Jeep in any way whatsoever, they absolutely need to release a version of the Ford Bronco with a V8. Because this brings me to my third point. This is one of the messiest, ugliest, disgusting looking engines that I have ever seen. And on most cars, especially like sports cars, like a GT500, or like an Audi R8 or Ferrari or something with a really good looking engine. I hate those plastic covers. Those motors actually look really good when you take those covers off. But this right here is just a huge mess and I really, really think it could use an engine cover because honestly, I really don't want to look at that. Just look how much cleaner it is under the hood of my 2015 Jeep Wrangler. 
and this is with the engine cover on, and this is with the engine cover off, and you can see with just a quick glance, there's not even close to the mess of wires and things that you saw on the top of the Ford Bronco engine. Much cleaner, very cool, and I would even run this without the cover on. So we're taking a break from this list style video to, to show you a couple of little, I will call them quirks and flaws. When I hit the button to roll down the window, it goes down all the way, and then it says driver door ajar. So when I roll down the window, it actually thinks the door is open. And then when I try to roll it back up, it goes back up. But as you can see here, now it doesn't close all the way. And the only way to fix it is to open the door, shut it, and the window goes all the way back up. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about that it really needs that the Jeep Wrangler doesn't have has to do with these pieces on the top right here. Not really just the pieces themselves, it's what you do with all the extra pieces when you take it off. Now when you lift up the carpet in the back of the Jeep Wrangler, there's this nice little area that has all these holes and it's a tray and everything where you can put all the bolts and little odds and ends and knickknack for the parts that go with the top. You can keep it organized and you can find them easily when you need to put the top back on. With the Ford Bronco, that doesn't exist. When you lift up the back here, you just have you know the tie down areas and everything and then if you lift this up all you have is the jack and everything for the spare there's nothing in here to keep all of the bolts and little miscellaneous pieces to the top so with that you have to figure out your own solution for keeping these bolts and while we're taking this moment to talk about the top let's jump into another point that i have that the ford bronco needs that the jeep wrangler has although the top is really nice and sleek and easy to take off the one thing it's missing is rain gutters and i think you'll agree with me i've seen tons and tons of videos with the ford bronco of rain and everything just pouring in the moment that you open the door to the ford bronco on the Jeep Wrangler, along the top edge here, it has just a little lip of a rain gutter that comes across the doors. That small little lip along the edge of the tops just makes a huge difference in keeping the water out of the cabin when you're opening the door. And the Ford Bronco desperately needs it. We're in a new spot with the Bronco at the lake. By the way, don't come to Idaho. It's super ugly. You'll you'll hate it. You don't want to come here. But anyways, enough of that said. Don't look don't look at this horrible scene. There's one thing in the interior of the Ford Bronco that the Jeep Wrangler has, and the Ford Bronco does have this feature, but they didn't really execute it like I really think they should. And that's these grab handles. It can be a little bit loose. There's also a grab handle over here for the passenger just to hold on to more of like a oh poop handle i guess you could say and then another one on the passenger side but i really wish like the jeep wrangler they would put the grab handles here on the a pillar or have some handles that you can wrap around the top of these bars with the grab handle down here on the dash it's more of like a pulling in motion instead of being up here like if i grab the top around the hook right here i can pull myself actually like up and in with this i just pull myself in pretty much straight so while these are cool and all they're kind of useless here just having a grab handle on the top part of the vehicle allows you to have a lot more leverage to pull yourself up to get inside and i think that's another feature that the jeep wrangler has that the ford bronco really does need now while we're chilling here on the outside we're going to go to my next point and jump directly into it and speed it up a little bit here and this point is something all jeep owners are used to and familiar with and that is you have to get used to getting rock chips and replacing your windshield at least once a year because it's gonna happen with these close to vertical windshields like on the jeep wrangler at some point you're going to be stuck behind an 18 wheeler or some truck that just pulled out in front of you and they're going to kick rocks all over your windshield and it's going to get split and cracked so easily so with that jeep has a solution that really helps a lot that ford needs and that is having the availability to order a Gorilla Glass windshield. You know that fancy glass, it's a little bit stronger, a little bit thicker. If Ford adds a Gorilla Glass option for the windshield, that would be super nice. All right, now we got just a couple more points to cover. Now, while we're sitting inside my Jeep Wrangler, this is really three of the points out of 12 that I'm just gonna knock out really quick all at once. The first thing out of these three grouping whatever. I wish that Ford Bronco right there with the V6 came with the option of a manual transmission. Especially for those who want to order the two-door Bronco like I drove before with the manual transmission and the V6, I would love to be able to order a two-door Bronco with the V6 and a manual transmission just to have for a fun, classic feeling vehicle because that two-door looks so much better than the four-door. 
I, I think in my opinion. And while I did drive it with a manual in the four cylinder, I really do think it still needed a little bit more power. And if you can combine the V6 with a manual in a two door, I think that would be perfect. Now with this group in the manual transmission, the Ford Bronco really needs this. A good old fashioned handle, pull it up and down, handbrake. And the last thing in this combo that it really needs is a manual tachometer. The Ford Bronco has the tach that's the electronic one and it goes up and down and it's, you know, easy to read. But along with this manual transmission, manual handbrake, we also just asked for a manual RPM gauge. Just give us that. Thank you, Ford.